Hi, I'm Dylan with Icon Vehicle Dynamics and Icon Alloys. We're here today to talk a little bit about the new Icon Pro Wheels. We have here our new Rebound Pro Wheel featuring interlock technology, which consists of this series of pins that goes behind the bead and helps support the bead. And because it's something that a lot of people haven't seen, there's been a lot of questions regarding how it works um, and other concerns, what it does. Um, so we want to talk about a few of the questions that people have had. Although there are more points of entry through the wheel, the type of seal that we use here, which is an O-ring boss type seal to an SAE standard um, sealing profile, because of that, it's a very secure connection, especially when you compare it to your valve stem. So your valve stem is far more prone to damage, also deterioration over time from uh, the elements. So yes, there are more points of entry, but your, your valve stem is still your biggest point of concern. So interlock was designed to prevent debeating of the tire. So the pins that um, come up and support the back bead of the tire are there to prevent the tire from being pushed off the rim, not necessarily clamp it for, um, for traction. So with the design of modern wheels, uh, the newer rim profiles um, have a standard profile where the tire meets, where the rubber meets the wheel. So all your grip is in that tire profile and rim profile where the rubber and wheel meet. The tendency for things, for tires to slip was probably a lot more common on the older obsolete 16.5 rims and things like that. So uh, tire rotation on the rim um, is determined by the rim profile and that um, global tire standard. So if you're in a situation where you think tire spinning on the rim is still a concern, then you're probably a candidate for the older traditional style beadlock. However, keep in mind that they're only, a traditional beadlock is only clamping the outer bead. So if you were to slip the inner bead, you could potentially create um, some other problems for the tire itself. The situation where uh, tire slipping on the wheel is of highest concern would be on a dragster. And, and those types of vehicles, they actually clamp the inner and outer bead. Um, but that's, that's a different scenario altogether and not really applicable to off-road. So DOT has guidelines that manufacturers adhere to um, for safety and standards um, for the wheel, industry, wheel and tire industry. So there's two areas, uh, two main areas where a traditional beadlock does not comply to those standards. The first one is it must not require periodic maintenance. So a traditional beadlock, um, the bolts that clamp the ring to the wheel are in a constant state of flex and therefore continually fatiguing over time. And they require uh, you, you should replace those bolts periodically and they will eventually fatigue and cause a problem. So with the interlock technology, the bolt is securely seated against the wheel so it doesn't flex and it is in a static loading situation the majority of the time. So no periodic maintenance is required and we can avoid that one um, problem with a traditional beadlock. The second um, guideline that a traditional beadlock does not pass the standards is um, if there is a failure in the system, the tire cannot leave the rim or leave the vehicle. So because with the interlock pro wheels, the, the bead from where the tire seats outward is integral to the rim. So the tire's always retained, it can never leave. Any failure, there, there's nothing, there's no connection to fail that would allow the tire to leave the vehicle. 
So we've, um, we've avoided those two problems that a traditional beadlock uh, wheel has. The answer is lower than you probably should. So now that de-beading is no longer an issue, your minimum tire pressure is, is going to be determined by a whole different set of factors, and primarily that's uh, potential damage to the tire. So really low tire pressures are going to cause wrinkling and pinching of the sidewall, as well as um, way less puncture resistance. They get punctured far easier at low pressures. Um, also, tire heat can be a problem at low pressure. So you need to make the call on what tire pressure is appropriate for you based on damaging the tire in other ways since de-beating is no longer an issue. Keep in mind that very low tire pressures are also going to compromise your uh, handling and also your ground clearance. So uh, the, the, the tire pressure should be appropriate to the type of driving and the terrain. So when we designed this area and the geometry uh, of the pins and how they go through the wheel, we added some extra material to the wheel around the pin area. But we also went one step further. We also increased the spoke strength and we increased the load rating. The load rating is now 3,200 pounds. And we did this in, in anticipation of how this kind of customer is likely to use the product. So we went one step farther than just making sure that the bolted junction was secure. We, we beefed up the whole wheel uh, for, for the more extreme uh, user. Keep in mind that even with all this extra material, it's still going to be lighter than a traditional beadlock. The reason we, des we decided to pick 3,200 pounds as our load rating to design to is because we found that um, a lot of tires that were popular in our customer base had a 3195 load rating on the tire. So we figured that's a good point to design to. We bumped it up a little bit and we designed the wheel to 3200 pound load rating. A lot of wheels out there are gonna be 2700 pounds or so. People have also asked um, how do tires from different tire manufacturers fit on the wheel? So if you look at the area where the tire sits on any wheel, and you can see it's going to sit in this area on the outside and in this area on the inside. So the geometry from this point, from the outermost point, all the way in through this diameter here is a, is a standard dimension. And we've made this wheel to that standard that's going to be compatible with all tire manufacturers. Then what we did is from that point forward, this is your, your normal beadlock um, bump that's in the profile. When you set the tire, it pops over this bead hump. The wheel standard guidelines give you an allowance for this dimension. So what we did is we stayed within their guidelines, but we went to the maximum allowable um, dimension for here so that we could accommodate um, more area for the pin to come through and support the back of the tire. So because we are not intersecting the contact area where the tire and wheel meet, and that's standardized for the industry, there should be no issues between different tire manufacturers. We've been testing interlock technology rebound pro wheels for quite some time now. And um, we have found throughout various situations, high speed, low speed, reducing tire pressures far below what would even be um, recommended for the terrain just to see what happens. And in every situation we've come across so far, um, we've been really, really pleased with the results. We also sent interlock out with a number of different tire sizes for testing to do the FMVSS um, DB test procedure. So the procedure consists of a standardized tool that comes and pushes on the side of the, of the tire to determine where it unseats the bead. In all situations with interlock, we 
actually maxed out the travel of the machine before the tire ever lost uh, bead contact. 